Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 78 with me Craig Barton. Now for the next few Resource of the Weeks I thought we'd try something different because I've noticed over the last few years on TES a growing trend has been for some teachers to upload complete lessons as opposed to for example a single PowerPoint or a worksheet or an activity. Now I absolutely love this because the advantage of a teacher uploading a complete lesson is that you get to see their full train of thought throughout all the activities that they include in that lesson. So you get to see the structure, you get to see the progression, you get to see the assessment and all that. Now, um, I remember when I was first starting out in teaching, I would have loved anything like that because I found that the, the most difficult thing about teaching. There was always activities available, but knowing the order to put those, how to structure those, when to do the examples and so on, I found really tough. And even now, when I've been teaching for a good few years, I absolutely love seeing a teacher's complete lesson. And I like adapting it, taking the bits of it I like, adding in my own stuff and so on. So I thought it would be useful for the next few uh, resource of the weeks to look through a series of lessons created by various teachers on TES. And I'm going to start with one of my favourites. Um, I'm really sorry if I say this name wrong, but Manoj Mystery I'm going to go for. Now this person has uploaded loads of complete lessons. You'll recognise the familiar yellow background if you've used their stuff before. And they're absolutely wonderful. So I thought we'd take a look at one in depth as, as this is a really good way to kickstart this series. So uh, this lesson is on pie charts. Um, and if I just go to the start there, the lesson starts in fairly familiar style with um, some nice learning objectives. And again, if you're thinking straight away, oh God, we, we don't do learning objectives or lesson objectives in our school. This is what I'm saying. Just adapt this however you want. Um, and there's a nice learning journey. And I think that's quite a nice idea for students to see the entire scheme of work so they know what's come in, what, what they should have done before, what's coming next and so on. So a really nice idea. And then I like these little brain in gear uh, activities. Um, just perhaps when students are coming into the room, little um, anagrams to get them going. But of course, the, the words are going to uh, be very important for the task that's coming next. So a little kind of literacy based starter there. Um, and then we have a starter. Now, what I find interesting about these is these are uh, very rarely are these anything to do with the activity that, that's going, uh, that's, that the activity, <laughs> that the lesson is based around. So this is, you've got mean, median and mode uh, transformations and solving equations. And again, I'm a huge fan of that. Um, all the research done into the forgetting curve suggests that if students haven't seen something for two weeks, it's pretty much gone out of the memory forever. And I certainly, with my year 11s this year, have been doing starters every lesson based on absolutely nothing to do with what we're doing that lesson, just to keep the knowledge ticking over. So that starter is just keeping fresh knowledge, uh, sorry, knowledge that they should have acquired before, just keeping that fresh in their minds. Then we have introductory tasks. Now, I love these because these are a way of assessing baseline knowledge, the knowledge that students need to be able to acquire the new knowledge that is uh, going to be imparted upon them throughout the rest of the lesson. So the lesson's on pie charts, so we've got can students recognize fractions of pie charts and relate those to degrees? Then later down here, can they do fractions? Can they do percentages? And notice that the answers are provided every time. Absolutely brilliant. And then this is where, for me, the lesson really takes off because there are just loads and loads and loads of different tasks. And you'd never fit all these into a, into a 50 minute or a one hour lesson. But that's the beauty of it. You just take the ones that you like and fit them around your style of teaching and your time constraints and so on. So we have a card sort here about interpreting pie charts. Uh, then we have a second pie, ch uh, second card sort here about pie charts, uh, relating them to, to more word-based things. And then once again, we have the answers. Then we have some bingo, um, and loads of bingo resources are provided there. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Then we get to um, examples and tasks, and really nicely set out uh, worked examples that you could perhaps print out and give the students or get them to copy down. And for every example, there is a task for the students then to try and their levels. Now, whether you're a fan of levels or not, that doesn't really matter, but it just gives you an idea of the kind of challenge for these students. And then an extension for that task as well. So you can see you're getting an example, you're getting an activity, you're getting extensions. Loads and loads of stuff for the students to be getting on with. More examples, more tasks, more examples. Again, moving through all the drawing and interpreting of pie charts that you could want. More tasks and more examples, all with full written solutions. Absolutely brilliant. And then when you get to the end of it, and notice that absolutely loads of stuff, link back to the objectives, and then really nice, you get a nice plenary exam question for them to do. And then uh, you might be wondering what the rest of the slides are about. Well, this is where 
uh, we get the what went well and so on but then we get all the worksheets without the answers on just in case you do want to print these out for the students so an absolutely chock-a-block fantastic lesson on pie charts and if I was uh, planning a lesson on pie charts myself then I can't think of much of a better way to start than to take that PowerPoint and then take bits out, add bits in myself, put it into my own style, perhaps my school might have a, <coughs> a certain format, certain things that we have to do during lessons, they can all be added in but based around that and I can just completely see the author's train of thought throughout that and the variety of tasks that they use and the structured examples that they use, absolutely wonderful stuff. So I wanted to use that one to kickstart this uh, this series where we look at complete lessons. And in the next few weeks, we're going to look at different styles of lessons to that, with the idea being that if we can see a wide range of how teachers deliver different lessons, we can then all start to build different bits in and improve our own teaching and learning. So I hope you found that useful and you're going to find the rest of the videos in this series useful. And I'll be back with a fresh one next week. Take care and bye for now.